Hello, everybody. Great to see you here. Hi. So, yes, I'm talking about how to level up your impact, authority, and profits using confident live video. Who's feeling confident here? Put your hand up. <laughs> OK, a few of you. Um, so, yes, uh, I'm going to be going through a lot of stuff in this short time. And so please take photos. You can share them on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Uh, but if I move too quickly, just uh, send me an email. So I'm doing a, using a similar tactic to Mike, just uh, not using any Polish words here. But if you just put in the, the words confident slides in the subject line, send me an email. I will send you the slides afterwards. So just maybe take a, a quick photo of that. And you don't need to stress. So I trained as a professional classical singer uh, around, well, I don't know, I don't want to think about how long ago. But I remember soon after I graduated from the Royal Northern College of Music in the UK, I was on this stage here at the Liverpool Philharmonic Hall. And I was singing the solo in this big piece of music. I don't know whether any of you have heard this, but it's Camina Burana. And the baritone solo had 16 top Gs and one top A in it. And I was, for the rehearsal, I was there on stage, and the choir and orchestra were behind me, and I started singing, and my voice cracked on one of the top notes. It was so embarrassing. But when it came to the evening performance, I was feeling petrified, and I was thinking to myself, why on earth did I say I was going to do this? Why on earth did I say I was going to do this concert and sing in front of all these people? Somehow I was able to channel that nervous energy into the performance I gave, and it was actually one of the best performances I'd ever given. It went really well. Now, fast forward the following week, I gave another concert in which I was not nervous at all, and it was one of the worst performances of my life. And I think it's the same with live video, getting in front of the camera or speaking on stage. We all will feel nervous, but it's, it's, a, it's a case of channeling that nervous energy into your performance, into, in, into your communication with your audience. But it made me think about other people who may have had some issues with their voices cracking. And so I did a bit of, a, bit of research on Google, and I came across some amazing voice cracks, and it made me feel a bit better about myself. So I thought I'd play you this. Hopefully the audio will work now. Yeah, so I felt a lot better. I don't know whether any of you suffer from this. When it comes to getting in front of the camera, who here suffers from feeling like an idiot syndrome? Come on, put your hand up. Yeah, do you, do you have this fear of looking like an idiot? I certainly do. Uh, so I wonder what is stopping you from going live or getting in front of the camera. I asked people, uh, all my clients and my audience around the world, and, and put it together in this word cloud. Things like getting started, uh, confidence in front of the camera, the content, what on earth do you say? Uh, it could be the, the tech, the planning, uh, loads and loads of things, consistency. So what is stopping you? Now, I think there are three main challenges, three main barriers that stop people from going live. And I wonder whether any of you identify with, with one of these. You may identify with just one, two, or all three of these. So the first one is the gear of live video, the technology. What do you use? Uh, it could be the fear. I hope you like this. We're rhyming here. The fear of live video. So communicating to your audience to, on, to, through the camera to your audience. That, uh, that is something that people get really nervous about. And I couldn't quite get the next one to rhyme, although somebody quite recently said, you could call this the content and marketing sphere to rhyme with fear and gear. I don't know. Um, so yeah, what on earth do you talk about? Uh, and how do you market that? So I'm going to talk about all those three things in my presentation. But before that, I wanted to give you an example of why live video is such a powerful thing, and some stats as well to back that up. Now, a friend of mine uh, is in, involved with this church in India. It's a really big church, but uh, they were struggling, really, to communicate their, their message and their Sunday services. And, but back in uh, 2016, they started streaming their services to Facebook and YouTube. And over the coming years, they have been able to expand their viewership to over 40,000 people on Facebook alone. And they've actually doubled their, uh, 
their um, church attendance in the last five years, which is awesome. There are loads of stories like that on how live video can really reach, uh, let you communicate with a much wider audience. And then when it comes to Facebook, so with Facebook, you could upload regular uploaded video, photos, links. But when it comes to Facebook Live, which is that big one on the left, uh, the number of interactions and comments is so much more uh, than other types, of uh, other types of formats. So do think about, it. instead of just uh, uploading regular uploaded video, why not uh, do, do a live video? And my friends at Agora Pulse did some research into this, and they found that compared to regular uploaded video, live videos receive, on average, 75% more shares than regular videos. So again, why not go live instead of just uploading a video? And LinkedIn Live has become a thing. So in February this year, LinkedIn, after quite a few years, has got come into live video. It's still in closed beta or beta, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, but this is something I've been playing with. I was given access to it last week. And the number of uh, views in the, in the first day was, was through the roof for me. So I'm getting a lot of engagement from that. At the moment, it only works with those tools. You can only uh, stream live via Wirecast, Social Live, or Switcher Studio. But I think in time, it will widen out, and they'll make it a lot easier. So let's talk about the first fear. This is the fear of the gear, the technology. How are you going to improve? Uh, how are you actually going to get the technology together? What do you need to go live? I wonder whether some of you feel like this. When things go wrong, you just want to chuck out your laptop out the window. Who's, who's nearly done that? Uh, I didn't quite do it there, don't worry. But um, what do you actually need to go live? The good thing is you only need two things. I'm a bit of an expert at making things overly complicated. But actually, the first thing that you need is a, just a device, whether that's your mobile, your smartphone, or if you wanted to get all fancy, you can use your computer. So just a regular iPhone or Android phone will be fine. Uh, or if you're going on a computer, it is a bit more difficult because you do need to have a more powerful computer. So a cheap PC laptop or um, an iP uh, a, a MacBook Air, they're probably not going to do the job quite so well. So I've got some, uh, uh, some speci uh, specs there. Ideally, 16 gig of RAM, uh, a quad-core i7 is going to give you a, a much better experience. But the second thing you need is a fast internet speed. A lot of ISPs make a big song and dance about the speed. They say, 200 megabits per second. But actually, the important thing here is your upload speed, because you're broadcasting. So ideally, go for uh, you should be looking for about 10 megabits per second, because it can fluctuate a lot. And although Facebook only needs around two or three, uh, 10 will just give you a lot more wiggle room for that. Uh, and to test that, every time before you go live, I always recommend testing your speed. So I did this yesterday when I was broadcasting to LinkedIn Live, and just to check that everything was OK. So this is an app that works with the web. Uh, it also is on iOS and Android and, and uh, Mac and PC. Uh, just check your upload speed before you go live every single time, because that will cause you, uh, me just make it a lot easier for you. Now, the differences between broadcasting from mobile and desktop, I just wanted to quickly go through that. Mobile is great in that it allows you just to go quickly live. It's great for those spontaneous lives. It's also great because it allows you to be more raw and authentic instead of getting all fancy. Um, uh, it's great for going out and about. So if you're at a conference like this or if you're going outside, uh, it's a lot easier to do that on mobile. But you can't schedule and you can't really easily share your screen. There's a few uh, disadvantages. And bringing in guests is difficult. Desktop allows you really to make a more professional experience. You can use some of the microphones that Mike was recommending in, in his talk. You can use those uh, directly for your live videos, which is great. Uh, you can use uh, professional cameras. You can bring in guests. You can highlight comments on the screen. You can do some really cool stuff. And it's not that difficult. It doesn't have to be difficult. But I always recommend to keep things simple from the beginning, bootstrap your live video studio. Only start with the simple things. And over time, as you uh, invest more, buy a, a better camera, buy a better microphone, you don't need to spend huge amounts of money to begin with. So two tools that I would really recommend starting off with uh, is that we've got BeLive there on the left, uh, which is around, you can do this for free, or it's $12 per month. Uh, these are all priced in dollars. 
Uh, that's great. You can bring in guests easily. You can highlight comments. It works with Facebook and Twitch. Whereas StreamYard is taking things up a little bit more to the next level. It works with YouTube Live. Uh, it doesn't yet work with LinkedIn, but uh, with, with Periscope on Twitter and uh, pretty much all of them. And it's a really, really cool platform. The one I use on a regular basis is Ecom Live, which is, I think, offers this real kind of sweet spot between power and, and ease of use. So I love this because it allows you to broadcast to pretty much any platform out there. You can highlight, highlight the comments on your screen, bringing in guests via Skype, uh, and also allows you to save the video as a full HD video for later. But it is only for Mac, unfortunately. So if you are a PC user or wanting to take things to the next level, then Wirecast would be the one I'd recommend. It used to be $700. It's quite an expensive tool. But just this week, they've released uh, a new uh, cut-down version for $249. Um, so uh, it, is a, it is more expensive. It does require a more com uh, powerful computer. And it's, it can be a little bit difficult to use. So next, look at the fear of live video. So I wonder whether you suffer from one of these issues. So introvert. Put your hand up if you're an introvert. I'm sure half the room is going to go up. <laughs> um, maybe you compare yourself with others. Maybe you feel like an idiot, like we said before. Or you don't like the way you look or imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is a big thing. Or you're using the tech as an excuse. I want you to embrace the wrong. I want you to actually embrace when things go wrong. Th these are some, uh, some stories that have happened to some of my clients. Uh, Janet Murray forgot to switch off her live broadcast. And uh, right at the end, she was eating a sandwich. And she, she didn't realize she was still broadcasting. That's happened to me, although I wasn't eating a sandwich. Uh, another thing. Uh, a client of mine, the background fell down on her halfway through. That was funny. Uh, the cleaner comes in and, and starts emptying the trash. Or my favorite is, uh, so somebody I know was in a messy office, and they found a clean corner. I'm sure you've all got clean offices, but she found a clean corner. And she was there with her phone, doing an amazing broadcast. And at the end, she was going to press the end broadcast button, but she pressed the flip camera to show everyone her messy office. But the thing is, it, it's something we can all, or most of us, can identify with. It shows her humanity. So I want you to press that Go Live button. Don't let these things get in the way. A great uh, quote, I, I love this, from Philip Kotler. So he says, uh, marketers need to adapt to this new reality and create brands that behave like humans. Approachable and likable, but also vulnerable. Brands should become less intimidating. They should become authentic and honest, admit their flaws, and stop trying to be perfect. I think live video can help you do that. And another, another quote I really like, which is, going live is not about being perfect. Your audience wants to see the real you. So embrace what makes you you, confidently displaying your flaws and imperfections. And that will allow you to really connect with your audience. So I don't know who wrote that, but that was a really, really good quote. Uh, so some places to start. Instagram stories is a great way to build that consistency, getting in, in front of the camera. It's not live video, but a great way to start. But another thing that a lot of people don't talk about is actually warming up your body, warming up your voice. And this is a great tool. It's a great app for Android and iOS. It's called One Minute Voice Warm Up. And it talks about how you use your voice, how you use your body, and gets you really into that groove just before you go live. And so I'm going to get you to do something, because I think you all need to stand up. So put your stuff down. I want you to all stand up. And we're going to do just a little bit of, because uh, I think you've been sitting down for a while. Don't worry, it's not too embarrassing. And um, we're going to talk about posture. So the first thing, whenever you do live video, I think we need to get your posture sorted. So without knocking people over, put your hands out to the side, and then let them fall down with gravity. And I want you to imagine you are a very important person. So shoulders down. You can put your, sh your arms down now. Look confident. And then we're going to talk about pitch interest. If I speak on a monotone like this, it gets really boring, doesn't it? So we need to use the highs and the lows of our voice. So I'm going to get you to do something really silly. It's called a lip drill. And it goes like this. You go from the bottom, like that. OK, after two, we're going to really use our voices. You didn't sign up, think you were signing up for this. Here we go. One, two. Oh, that's good. And finally, diction. So I'm going to get you to sing a silly song. OK, who knows 
the William Tell Overture. It goes like this. Isabella was saying I shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna, I think you can do it. It's to the words, Daddy's got a head. That's Daddy has got a head like a ping pong ball. Okay? And it goes like this. Daddy's got a head like a ping pong ball. Daddy's got a head like a ping pong ball. Daddy's got a head like a ping pong ball, like a ping pong ball. Loads of energy. After two, you can do this. I know you can. Here we go. One, two. Daddy's got a head like a ping pong ball. Daddy's got a head like a ping pong ball. Daddy's got a head like a ping pong ball, like a ping pong ball. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was fabulous. <laughs> Great, you can sit down. So just very quickly over the next thing, what we're talking about there is just being yourself, having a laugh, but heightening your personality. I call this heightened authenticity. So being yourself, but just even more yourself, more energy. So the final section, which I'll go through really quickly, is what on earth do you say? The content and the marketing. So it's some things to think about. In terms of planning, there are five Ps. There's the planning, what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. There's pre-promotion. There's the production of the live video. There's then the post-promotion. And finally, repurposing it. I'm going to go through all those five quickly now. So planning. A friend of mine, Sam Ashdown, came up with this really good acronym called BLAST. OK, so I'm just going to quickly go through. These are just ideas of the kind of live videos that you could do. So one is behind the scenes. People love to be a bit nosy and look at your life and what you're doing in, in, your, in your business. So just how you run your business, that kind of thing. Local, where is it that you are located? Show people, your audience, where you live, where you work. They'll be really interested in that. A day in the life, what you're working on today and your thoughts, share your thoughts on a regular basis. Sneak peek, that's all about uh, something, some exclusive content that you're sharing with your audience uh, that no one else will see, and you can get some feedback from your audience. And then finally, some pillar content, some content that is, is maybe you're repurposing from a blog post you've created or a podcast, and it could be a how-to video, that kind of thing. Now, when you're planning, I think you can use pen and paper, you can use an Excel spreadsheet, but I particularly like this tool called Content Cal. And it's, it's basically, it's a planning tool that allows you and your team to brainstorm content. So I've created content with different types of uh, themes on the left, and we've collaborated with my team there. And then, once you've done that, it doesn't actually allow you to post the live video itself, but you can then create and schedule the content for your promotion um, afterwards, and it will actually post that out to Facebook, Twitter, and, and so on from Content Cal. So then there's uh, the pre-promotion. How do you get your message out there? There are loads of ways, but just very briefly on this tool here called Wave, which is, uh, allows you to create pre-recorded video. Uh, so you could create a trailer for your live video. And the great thing about it, once uh, you create it, and it, it integrates with loads of uh, stock libraries out there, but it allows you to then download in different formats, so wide, square, and even Instagram story format. So it's a really good tool. Uh, Messenger bots, I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to quickly go through that, but this allows you to create reminders and lead magnets for your live video. Just very easily, people can subscribe to this by just adding a comment to your Facebook Live, and you can send them a guide, a PDF, uh, that way. So if you're interested in that, come and see me afterwards, and I can tell you more about it. Then there's the production. So I've talked about the different tools before. Uh, but while you're doing it, you need to think about uh, getting people involved. Ask people about themselves. Make it easier for mobile users. Just get people to comment with just one word or just numbers. Make it easy for them. Uh, do ask for likes and reactions, although Facebook is cracking down on this a little bit more. They don't actually like you to do that too much. So I think you have to be a bit more creative. Uh, you can do things like cross-posting. You can uh, make it interactive with polls. Uh, and encourage others to uh, share or host a watch party as well. You need to think about the people who are watching live, but you also need to think first about the people that are watching in the future, your replay viewers. So I always start saying, hi, thank you so much for watching the replay, and then I'll summarize what I'm talking about before then welcoming my live viewers. Very briefly on this, these are some other things you can think about in terms of your live video content. So creating empathy, reassurance, explaining things that make your audience feel that they're learning something from that. And then finally, summarize the content and then give them a call to action. Post-promotion, 
Very similar to pre-promotion, you can share on uh, using tools like Buffer or Agura Pulse or Hootsuite, uh, and then make sure that you're actually engaging with people's comments afterwards. So I use Agora Pulse, and I, I use that to uh, allow me to delegate comments to my team and make it a lot easier. It's a really, really cool tool, Agora Pulse. And then finally is repurposing. Do not forget that once you've created this piece of live video content, it, becomes, it can become evergreen. So from that live video, you can create a blog post. Embed the video in the blog post. You can use a, a tool to transcribe that. Instagram stories, you could create a podcast. And in fact, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing when I launch mine later this month. Uh, YouTube video or LinkedIn video, you can create so much content from that one video. And then just a, a final tool is a tool like Rev, uh, or there's Sonic's uh, AI is what Mike recommended, or uh, there's another one called Otter. These allow you to transcribe your aud the audio from the video into show notes or even closed captions that you can add to your Facebook videos. Because a lot of people watch videos silently. So uh, something to think about there. And there's a little uh, image there that shows you how to do that. And that's it. So I don't know whether we have time for questions. But if, if not, you can see me afterwards. And I'd love to help. Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Stay with us. Stay with us. Are there any questions? We encourage you to have one because we need to install this computer, so at least one. <laughs> but about anything, you know, it's about uh, maybe Ion's private life, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> you pick it. So that's top secret. His, that's top, top secret. Yes, top yeah, secret. yeah, yeah like, <laughs> we live in a world. Ion, so. You can sing a song. Can sing a song. <laughs> so maybe a question would be a better option. How, how long should a live stream generally be? Should it be? Please use Mike because then we have it for. How long should a live stream generally be? Is it good to do a really short one or a long one? What would you recommend? Great question. And it's kind of similar in a way to podcasting. It kind of depends on, on what you've got to say. So I, I actually think vary it. So if you're doing a regular live show, so my, uh, I do a regular live video show every Monday called the Free Range Social Show. And we try and aim between 30 and 40 minutes because uh, it, it's, more of a, it's more like a show. But if it's just you presenting in front of the camera, then really three, four minutes, five minutes is fine. In fact, Facebook have said uh, some data shows that around seven minutes is the optimum in terms of the number of reactions. Yet I've also seen some data that says 17 minutes. So the answer to really your, your question is it depends. And I would say for a regular show, keep it as consistent to the same length as possible. But for other shows, maybe do a, a five-minute show, uh, maybe do a, or, a five-minute kind of uh, you're wandering around outside and you're just sharing your thoughts. I've also seen people that have gone live for two hours. I think you've gone live for, what was it, 24, 48 hours? Yeah, so I that's I a bit I extreme. That, I, I, thought, I saw that also. Yeah, so yeah. if you like Mike, Poland, you, like, you could no. do that. Although there is a limit with Facebook of, I think it's four hours, so you need to then create another one, but yeah. yeah. You know, for, for, for the sake of your own friends, I will, I will encourage you to improvise a little bit more for, for us about anything, you don't know. What's your favorite food, for example? I, I, I think I, I might be partly Indian, uh, because I just love Indian food. Curry. Yeah, you look like, like you look like one. Like, <laughs> I, like, so, now I get it. Now, okay, now it's obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so, Indian food. But I, I have to say, uh, I do love Polish food. And this is actually my seventh time in Poland. Mm -hmm. I have, I, first time I came here was in 1997. I was w working at a... Most of those folks wasn't, weren't even alive. I know, I was just about to say that. Do you remember 1990? Who remembers 1997? Come on. Oh, yeah. there we go. There's a few. <laughs> Thank you. That makes me feel so much better. Um, and is, yeah, and so I've been here, I've been here with my mum. I, I then t took my wife here. Uh, and uh, I've been speaking. I spoke at quite a few conferences here. So the next thing, I want to bring my kids here and uh, uh, see, see the beautiful place, the beautiful country of Poland. So, yeah. Yeah, like it's a great idea to invite kids to a, to a conference. Let them educate from the very beginning. Well, so yeah. what about the cars? Do you like cars, maybe? <laughs> I, I, do you know, I, I, I'm, fr I'm afraid to disappoint you, but I'm not really into cars. You're I kind of, no. Uh, but if you liked a car, what would, would it be them? Like? <laughs> well, I quite, okay, this is really embarrassing. But <laughs> I quite, my, uh, so my, my wife has a better car than me. She's got a Skoda Octavia. No, that's, I actually quite like that. It's quite that's nice. That's fine. Is that okay? I don't judge you. It's funny, but fine. But <laughs> it's so. not very exciting. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you say Tesla? Oh, so te Tesla. Tesla, yeah. Tesla, okay. Yeah, so you're an Indian driving a Tesla, and um, you like to educate, educate your kids yeah. from the best speakers. 
what a wonderful man we have here. <laughs> Just like we would like to have this wonderful connection with uh, our... <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Do, do I you like, like honey? honey? Yeah. I do like honey, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. type of honey, mostly? <laughs> the honey, his Those honey. Th What's that called? Sherby. Oh, share, yeah, well, obviously, share bee honey, yes. So if, this you, if one, you want to, yeah, yeah check, check, out, uh, check out the share bee honey. It's, it's really Yeah, nice. this one. Th this one's really interesting. Like, the, this is the best one, you know. It's not often you go to a conference and you get presented with honey. No. But, but, uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's great. It's great. It is, it is. Like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're traveling, like you yes. <laughs> so, <Are we>, uh, <laughs> so. I, I do love to travel. I do yep. love to travel. So uh, I've I actually in the last month it's been a bit mad. So I've been to uh, Slovenia. I've oh. been to San Diego. Uh, I've been to Newcastle in the UK and uh, probably somewhere else. And then I'm going to speaking in London uh, n this month and then. I'm going back to the US, Cleveland, Ohio in September. Where exactly in London? It's, I don't actually know the venue, but it's, it's a conference called Build Your Audience Live. It's a, it's a small conference of around, how many people at this conference? Is it over 10,000? Uh, 6,000. 6,000? Yes. So the conference I'm speaking at in London is, a, is actually 80 people. It's a really micro conference. So I'm actually looking forward to that. I think there's, I love big conferences, but I also like the small ones so too. So it's a really prestigious one. So it's pres I like that. Yeah, yeah so can I use that? Small. Yeah, yeah, take it. It's thank for you. you. Is that free? Is that free? Yeah, okay, that's free. This is like free of charge. <laughs> this one. One song. One song. Are you sure? Uh, I can do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you you're ready? You're ready. So you're safe because he feels ready also. Oh, okay. Well. So but you can sing if you want to, so go on. Well, like, I can quickly sing an American folk song. So it's called Shenandoah. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you away, you rolling river. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you away, we're bound away. Across the wide oh. Missouri. <laughs> You're really excited. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Phil.